The belt squat is an amazing piece of equipment because it allows you to train the legs heavily even if you're prone to back injury because you don't have to load the spine like with a barbell squat. And it's an excellent choice for power lifters who are prone to back injury because really there's no other squat variation that mimics a barbell squat quite as closely as the belt squat. So you'll be able to get more frequency and more volume with your leg work without having to load up your back quite as often. But the problem with the belt squat is when training from home, the things that you always have to consider are one, how much does it cost? And two, how much floor space does it take up in comparison to the amount of versatility that you're getting out of that piece of equipment that is taking up your floor space. Belt squats do typically take up a lot of space even if you have a rack mounted option and they're pretty expensive as well, ranging from $1,000 all the way up into the five to $6,000 range. That's why in this video, we're gonna solve both of those problems with a DIY cable belt squat machine. We have all of our cuts made for this project. One note that I want to make real quick is this platform is a little bit bigger than it actually needs to be. The reason why I made this platform as big as I did is simply because we already had this two foot by four foot piece of plywood laying around. So I just made the design based around this two by four uh, piece of plywood rather than cutting it down to a different size because the bigger it is, the more stable it is anyway. So I figured why cut it down and make it smaller when we could just build it based off of this. And a quick note here is my measurements that I'm about to read off to you are a little bit weird simply because this isn't a perfectly two foot by four foot piece of plywood. It's actually 23 and three quarter inches by four foot. So it's actually one quarter inch short of being two feet. So that's why some of these measurements are gonna be a little bit wonky. So the size of the cuts that you will need can change depending on how big of a platform you want to make. If you're gonna build it exactly as I have built it in this video, you will need one 23 and three quarter inch by 48 inch piece of plywood, two 40 inch two by fours, two 45 inch two by fours, and four 20 and a half inch two by fours. And for reasons that'll become clear later in the video, you will need a four foot long piece of plywood or two by four or just some type of four foot long board, as well as another two by four that is the same depth as this piece of wood. And the depth of this piece of wood actually doesn't matter. This is one foot depth and one foot here four reasons that will come clear later in the video. So now it's time to actually put all this together. We're gonna use three inch wood screws. So we'll drill two pilot holes per piece of wood and put two screws per piece of wood.
So we're done with the frame. All we have to do is mount the pulley, prepare the cable, and then after that we'll talk about why I've decided to make this design the way that it is. Before we put the pulley on there, one note that I want to make, rather than putting the pulley in the dead center of the box, you actually want to put the pulley a little bit forward of center simply because since you're going to be standing in the center of the platform, if you put the pulley in the center of the platform, then the pulley is actually, or the cable rather, is actually going to be going behind you so that it can loop around and then go to the other low pulley. So you need to have it a little bit in front of you so that the cable itself is coming straight up. The first step is to cut your cable to length. I want it to be a four foot cable extension, so I'm gonna do four feet six inches for my cable so that when I shave down some of the end and loop it around through the cable thimble and crimp it down, there'll be approximately four feet left over. So you'll slide two cable ferrules onto each end of the cable. We'll do one side at a time here. You'll put the cable thimble on wrap the cable around, feed it back into the cable ferrules. This is gonna be a lot easier if you have two people, but I do not today. So we're gonna make it work. All right. This is a lot easier if you have a second person to hold this versus having to do it yourself, but we're gonna work with what we can work with. that is one side complete I would advise trimming this side of it down maybe putting a little bit of tape of some kind on there that way this isn't just ruining your clothes an important step that you want to keep in mind is if you're using a pulley that doesn't have a cotter pin or some other way of separating you'll want to loop your cable through the pulley before terminating the other side or else you're gonna have to prepare another section of cable because you won't be able to actually loop it through the pulley. It's completely finished now and it turned out even better than I thought it was going to. I'm incredibly pleased with how this thing turned out. And I did mention earlier in the video that we would circle back around and talk about what this back shelf part was for. And the reason why I decided to add this back shelf is because the way that this thing is built, since it's attached to a low pulley and the cable goes through the pulley like this, the weight stack is wanting to pull the platform forward. So I wanted to add this little back shelf to add a couple dumbbells on to add a little bit of extra weight to prevent the weight that you're lifting from pulling the platform forward across the floor. And because of how heavy this thing ended up being and the fact that we have rubber floors in here, there's actually enough friction that even before I added the dumbbells on here, uh, it actually was perfectly still and didn't pull forward. Now I haven't gone incredibly heavy on it yet, so maybe if we had more weight on there, it might have needed the dumbbells. Uh, but if you don't have rubber floors and if you're going with a little bit of a smaller platform and you don't have all of that weight and friction of the rubber to keep it from moving, you will definitely need the back shelf 
to add the dumbbells on for that extra weight. And you might be wondering why I made a separate back shelf rather than just making the whole platform bigger. And the reason for that is one, as I already mentioned, I already had this two foot by four foot platform. So that's why this is the size that it is, as I mentioned earlier. And two, I already had this piece of plywood as well. So I just threw it on the back and made a separate little shelf. But there are a couple of benefits to making it separate versus one big platform. And one of those is when you go to put this thing away, which is another benefit of this that we have solved versus an actual dedicated squat, uh, belt squat machine, is that this can store away versus always being right in the middle of your floor. So you can simply unhook this from the post and then go lean it up against the wall or something like that. And with this back shelf, it gives you a nice little handle to hold on to. So when you do go to pick it up to put it away, it's easy to pick up and carry to wherever you're going to store it. And two, if you wanted to, you could actually put some hooks on the wall and actually hang this up on the wall and get it off the floor entirely. And another idea that you could do if you don't have rubber floors, if you just have a cement floor or even a wood floor or something like that, is they make heavy duty rubber feet. So not like the ones that would just go on the bottom of a chair that's sitting on top of hardwood, but one that actually has little rubber anti-slip feet and they, they screw in rather than just being held on by glue or a little tack and I was going to add 15 of those. I was gonna add three on the bottom of each foot to give a little bit of, of even extra grip, uh, but we're not gonna add those just because it would add another 15 bucks to the price. And it appears that we don't need those for my particular setup, but I did wanna mention it for you specifically since for some scenarios it would be needed. I'm not going to do anything else to this for now. I'm just going to leave it as is for now. In the future I might go back and sand it down and paint it and throw a Treadway Training logo on there or I might throw some type of logo on there and then throw some clear uh, polyurethane on top of it to give a nice logo with a clear coat on top of it to protect it or something like that. And that's one area that I would actually be open to hearing from you guys as well. If you have an idea for what I should do to make this look nice and fancy in the future, let me know down in the comments and I might just take your suggestion and put your idea on this box. I haven't done the math yet to see how much this would have cost if I didn't already have all this stuff on hand and I had to buy it separately, but I'm gonna say it's probably around 100 bucks or so, and of course I'll throw that number up on screen. And that's the other drawback that we talked about at the beginning of the video is the price of a belt squat machine. And so at just around a hundred bucks, this is a very good option for a belt squat. This feels really good. It's not like you're skimping out. I know a lot of DIYs are just kind of something you do to get by, but this is something that is extremely high quality and you're not sacrificing anything in the quality department and it's cheaper and it is portable and you can store it away. So really we've solved all of the problems that we talked about at the beginning of this video with this DIY project. If you don't already have a cable set up to hook this up to, I actually have a video where I show how to make four different DIY cable pulley options. So if you wanna check that out, you can click right here. If you wanna check out the DIY playlist, you can click here. As always, God bless you and your family, and we'll see you next week. The problem with the belt squat, the problem with the belt squat is, the problem with the belt squat though, the problem with the belt, the problem with the belt squat is that if you're training at home, <clears throat>